What? 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 Go. There is a not yet beginning to be a beginning. There is a not yet beginning to be a not yet beginning to be a beginning. There is being. There is non-being. There is not yet beginning to be non-being. There is a not yet beginning to be a not yet beginning to be non-being. Suddenly there is non-being. But I do not know when it comes to non-being, which is really being and which is non-being. Now I have just said something, but I do not know whether what I have said has really said something or whether it hasn't said something. excuse for dropping on stage. It is not a case of one drop is okay, or two, or three, or four, or less than the previous act. A drop is more than a mistake. It is a failure, a basic failure to do our job. Given time, the only certainty is this failure. Technical reasons are irrelevant. Being tired, being ill-prepared, being sick, these
these are not excuses. Neither is the environment. The lights are bad, it is outdoors and windy, it is still our fault for being there in the first place. There are exactly seven psychological reasons for dropping on stage. Seven <laughs> sins. The just finished drop. <laughs> the great recovery drop. <laughs> the oh fuck, I dropped drop. <laughs> the hard bit coming drop. <laughs> This trick is easy, drop. <laughs> <laughs> the I will not drop, drop. <laughs> and the cunning and ingenious I will drop, drop. These are our patron saints, our ap apocalyptic horsemen. We hate them, but they live in us all. And only by understanding them can we control them, but we can never, ever vanquish them. Given time, our only certainty is failure. <laughs> Thank you.
thanks a lot. Uh, if you guys made it through that introduction, then you're going to make it through the rest of the show just fine. So now that you're still here, after our little pretentious start, a little bit of a test, the rest of the evening's going to go just fine. My name's Jay. We have Eric, Luke, and Ben. And uh, we've been researching all week different points of juggling. Uh, we did a little research project last year in Berlin together, and it went well enough that we thought we would try it again this year. So this week we've been researching different, different ways to look at juggling composition. And in fact, we started this research project back in March, or February or March. Um, Luke and I made a little interview with, with Ivar, and actually the first thing that Ivar said basically is that we shouldn't do this at all. In fact, we should be looking at other parts of juggling. And then he proposed for about one hour of many more things that were interesting. But he also said that we should still go and look at composition since nobody else has done it yet. Or he said if nobody else had done it yet, then it's worthwhile doing. So for better or worse, nobody's done it yet. Mostly for worse. And we got stuck being the first ones. So what we're going to show you this evening is some results we found from our work this week. And I'll just tell you a little bit about what we tried to do. If we would have a discussion about a different uh, topic, and we would try to find out things we wanted to answer, so we'd have a list of questions, yeah. and then we would try to make some experiments that we could test to see what would happen. And that's about it. So tonight, we're going to show you the tests we made and show you the things we found about juggling composition. Also, you should know, since uh, this is a very homemade project, we gave ourselves very strict limits since we don't have so much time or money or patience. So a lot of the tasks we would set down the question, make the experiment, and then complete the experiments in about five to 11 minutes each. So very, very fast decision making and trying as best as we can. So the first thing we're going to show you tonight was a little composition exercise we did about canon. Because in dance or in music, we have this idea of canon, that if there was more of me, we would go here, and the next person would do the same, and the next person would do the same in time. But since uh, we wanted to test this with just one person, so we tried to do a juggling composition, where the idea is that you do a canon, but by yourself. Which basically means that, well, <laughs> we don't know, but it means that we're going to try to make the objects move in canon. That was it. And here's something that Eric made. And I should say that in our work, because we had so little time to get through all the material, and we gave ourselves very little time to actually work on any of the experiments, we're not so interested in catching everything like we might normally be. So tonight, we're just going to show you the ideas. And if we drop, it sucks for all of us. <laughs> So the next experiment, uh, we all went through all these experiments and 
Again, tonight we're just picking out the ones we thought we could show you, or the ones we thought we could remember without looking at the videotape. So, another experiment we did was that when we started this week, we, we didn't know the exact point of, of where to go from, since uh, no experiments had been made before, and everything is kind of meshed together. So we just had to jump in and start somewhere. And we thought a good idea would be to take ideas from our past. So from when I was a little kid, the stuff I heard about juggling, we decided to test this to see if it was true or not, or if it was good, or where did it come from. So one of the things I'd always heard uh, growing up, being a performer, is that you should use the whole stage. And that if you don't use the whole stage, you, you're doing bad performing. <laughs> in fact, there's a competition in America for juggling, a stage show competition, and you would get points marked off if you didn't cover the whole stage. So we decided to test that in various ways to see if it was necessary to cover the whole stage. And now, Ben is going to show you his composition where he intentionally tries to not balance the stage. So on purpose, he will not use the whole stage. This was one experiment we made to see if it would work or not. So maybe you'll fall asleep and be bored, but it's for science. Can I do it further back, Eric? You're not, I can't see you there. Maybe, yeah. I can just cheat a little bit. Yeah, now you can do whatever you want. I should say as well that with all these exercises, we try to keep it in line with juggling as most that we can. So we're not so much interested in dance or theater or literature or clowning, music. Of course, all these elements combine and you can't escape it since we're talking about a performance. So sure, on some level, we use theatrical staging to make a concept, but hopefully we stick, uh, we stick very close to the juggling and that the juggling dictates what happens. So, uh, another rule I had when I was young is that you shouldn't do uh, tricks that are similar next to each other because the audience will get bored. So if you have some trick that's like this and a trick that's like this, you wouldn't do that. It's a concept called high, low, fast, slow. And you can use that if you want. But we decided to test it. Uh, in many different ways. We made lots of different experiments based on high, low, fast, slow. And so Luke is going to show you a vaguely related experiment. <laughs> what we did was, first, we had Luke make a sequence using just one object, and so he makes a sequence, whatever it is, and he doesn't change it. And the next thing is he adds an object to the sequence, and then he does, it, does not change that and then he adds the third. And we had to guess which was the first object he added, and then we had to try to guess which was the second object. So who thought he started with the white club? You'll have to watch the TV show to find out the answer next week. Okay. 
Duke gets voted off. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, we tested another old, 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 old idea, which is that normally as a juggler, if I'm juggling clubs, and I want to then next show you my ball juggling skills, normally what I would have to do is I'd have to stop juggling the clubs and put them down and pick up the balls and start again. So maybe it's not uh, the most interesting way, and maybe there's a better way. I don't know. But one thing that old-time jugglers had was an assistant. Right? They had their lovely assistant to, to throw them the props, and then they could go faster this transition. They could make it faster. So we decided to, to test this as well. And also, you'll notice in old time acts, they would start with three balls, then four balls, then five balls, then three rings, four rings, five rings, then three, four, five, six, whatever, clubs, like that. And that's a little bit easier, because all you have to do is catch one more object, and then do your trick, and then catch the next one. So it's quite fast. So we decided not only to try to do this without an assistant, we decided to mix up the order of props to make our lives more difficult. So we decided on an order of three balls, four clubs, four rings, five balls. And I'm going to show you what I tried to do without an assistant. And next we have somebody else showing what they do.
this together, we decided that we should have a lovely assistant. <laughs> so we divided into pairs and we made one person a juggler and one person a, an assistant. And we have two rules. The first rule is that we have to make the transitions efficiently, meaning that you couldn't take a half hour in between each set of props. Uh, so efficiently and also then we had painlessly as a as a rule, meaning that if you just switch them in a really boring way that it causes us great pain, then we shouldn't do that either. So this is Ben and Luke, the assistant and the juggler, painlessly and efficiently.
experiments about this same subject, um, and some of them turned out nice, so we thought we'd show you two more. And the first one is by Ben, just alone. The task was to switch between one set of props to another. So a little bit more simple, and I think a little bit more nicer. inspired by two members of our audience tonight, uh, specifically Victor's uh, graduation piece, which was based a little bit on some part of being friends with Ule. And so, uh, if you haven't seen the piece, Victor does this 20, 25 minute long, very great, very, very great routine. And then at the end of the show, which is, he kind of sets up this emotional high point of the show, and then he has to juggle seven clubs, which puts a uh, very strong focus on the seven clubs, which isn't something I would ever probably choose to do. Um, making an emotional show, and then kind of the high point being this very last juggling of seven clubs, it's a lot of pressure, basically. But um, it's also very moving when he catches it, and even when he doesn't catch it and does it again, it gives it more importance. So we thought of this idea, um, can drops have more importance? Can they have more consequence? Because also, uh, I was directing a show in Italy. Um, this is a very simplistic example, but I still remember it. I was directing a show in Italy, and a girl who did aerial hoop, she came to, me, came to me one day just screaming and said, why don't the jugglers fucking catch things? <laughs> well. <laughs> But her point was that she doesn't fall off the hoop every three times in her act, so why do the jugglers just drop like it's no big deal? So again, it's a simple example. It's not uh, you know, exactly accurate, but it certainly makes me think, um, how can drops have more consequence? So 
we tried an experiment to try to make drops have more consequence, and here is mine.
And even if I make up a new trick, it's still the same, symmetrical, and both hands do the same job. And when I came to Europe, there was uh, juggling like uh... <laughs> yes. so, so I decided to set out and figure out what, what the hell is going on in Europe, basically. Because I didn't know and I couldn't do it as well as I just did now after years of practice. And, <laughs> but it remains that European juggling is asymmetrical and it doesn't loop or repeat. It's very much starts and stops. And American style juggling is very even and regular because uh, in America, again, based a little bit about competing in sports, so if I do it with my left, it means I should also do it with my right hand if I'm a good juggler. So I learned everything both sided and like this. And since then, uh, the first research uh, workshop we did last year together in Germany was about manipulation. It was about um, different sorts of asymmetrical, more placements and carries like this. And so I was thinking for the past few years that maybe juggling of the future will not be depending on where you're from. In fact, that uh, both the American style of high technique and uh, symmetrical looping patterns, where both hands are equal, will be combined with the European asymmetrical, more manipulation style. And so we decided that we should try to do this now. Why wait for the future? So um, we wanted to make a sequence where each throw was uh, as technically hard as possible and also was reaching its full potential. So not to waste any, not to waste anything. And uh, we gave ourselves a limit of three throws or three moves because it's very difficult. So now I will try mine several times. <laughs> I mean, try to remember it, and then once I remember it, I will try it several times. Do it. Away from the computers. <laughs> This year in our work with composition, we found it a little bit harder to be so concrete and precise. So instead of making a list of rules, 
we're writing a little bit of a manifesto, like a, a school of thought, like cubism or something for juggling. But uh, as well, we wanted to make something like a juggling haiku. So in language, haiku is just a structure or a form for a composition, a very historically concrete and rigid structure of composition or language. And in a haiku, you have five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, like this. So with juggling, we wanted to make a structure for composition that was equally clear and short and hopefully fun. So just hours ago, in fact, we made uh, what we call a blend. And that's the new thing you're going to see it everywhere. Um, in the hall, like an Albi maybe, in the juggling corner, or I don't know, wherever Wes is practicing, basically. So, <laughs> so a blend has a few rules, and it's very simple. You take three objects, it doesn't matter what they are, and, well, we're going to do a simple blend for now, yeah, not yeah, advanced. Yeah, 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 they're not ready We yet. don't want them to like... Yeah, exactly. So, for now, we're going to say I have three objects, and the way I would make my blend is I would start with one object, and I would make, I would make a, uh, a thing with it, a trick or an action, whatever. So here's my thing. Here's my, this is it. This is the first part of my blend. Then you take the next object, and you add it into the mix. So I keep this the same, but I try to add this one to do something at the same time. And uh, so then I have this. This is the... Next part of my blend. And then finally, you try to add in the last object. And this is the way to make one. And all the actions should happen at the same time, basically. And that's it. So it's a little bit of a blend. It's a new trick that's going to, we're going to lock some money and go to Vegas, Las Vegas. <laughs> that's our goal with this trick right here. The world's first blend with green. This is a responsibility. Yes. <laughs> Well, should have got a haircut. Okay. <laughs> Don't drop it. Yeah, no, I just gave him more coffee time. And it's the world's first. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Thank yes. <laughs> Research, we helped Tilda out with some of her research, and this is a little composition we made from working with her. And I think we had two words to to lead a composition, and the two words were presentation, presence, presence, and gravity. Yeah.
right, this will be the last, uh, for all intents and purposes, this is the last experiment we will do tonight. Then we'll get on with the real stuff. <laughs> this one that's right at the end. I said for all intents and purposes. All right. The, yeah. <laughs> so I have this, uh, this is, I think, my presence, presence and gravity thingy, whatever, whatever it was. But uh, yeah. Ah, here's something to watch. Thank you guys for coming here tonight. I want to thank uh, Kiki, your help, for having us uh, in the space. And thank you, Peter, for the sound system. And we want to thank uh, Apple for the sponsorship <laughs> as well. And uh, our last experiment we made was a little composition based upon traffic light juggling, which is that in uh, South America where the, when the light turns red, the cars stop and jugglers will run out in the middle of the street and do a little routine and then ask for money. And so uh, that's what we're going to do, including the asking for money part. We're going to pass the hat if you'd like to show and you want to see more of this. Oh, wait. Uh, just give us money. It's better than trying to ask for So, so we can buy new shoes. We're not going to some money. Yes, we can buy new shoes and. Listen, seriously though, a pizza at the pizzeria cost 35 crowns, you know, for the circus price. But they don't know that Ben and Luke are from the circus hall, so they get charged 50 crowns for pizza. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, something about ice cream, I don't remember. Yeah, good. All right, so what we're gonna do is show up, and, and, and Ben calculated, he has some friends in Berlin. They, they can juggle for 25 seconds, uh, and then collect money after that. So we have a 25 second long, Traffic light routine, you're gonna all imagine that you're in a car, a bus, a bus would actually, they could all fit in a bus, yeah, that's smart. And uh, uh, two buses, right, no, yeah. three, good, right, and I think we do it at the same time, okay. So we had composed these uh, separately, but uh, we're just gonna give it all to you at once, so we get more money. <laughs> We need a signal. Eric, can you be the signal? Yeah. Mic? yeah. Uh, would be, um, you can count, just say green, green, green orange, amber, amber, amber. Red. Okay. I, do, I think they're doing something, so I think we. Let's say it's green. Let's say it's green. Green. It's green right now. It's green. Uno. <laughs> Cars are <laughs> passing by. I'm counting the money I just made from the last light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's still green, I think. Yeah, also, in between, actually, if this was, the situation was real, when it's green, we're fighting these guys that have the, the windshield wipers. Yeah, the windshield they wipers. Wash. That's what we would normally do if right. it's green, but now it's kind of a fake situation. So it's still green. And then. Amber! Amber. <laughs> Red! Oh, <up> <laughs>
Yes, thank you for coming and humoring us. It's been our pleasure that you were here tonight. Thank <laughs> you.